Hey everybody, welcome to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm Jordan Edwards. I'm Demi Ramos. And today we've got roses on the show. We do have roses. Okay, she's a singer songwriter from Philly and she is best known for her collab with the Chainsmokers. Um, that song is called Roses. And I am excited to talk to Roses because she, I'm, I peeped her last release, um, an album called Crazy, and she's a really intricate songwriter, and it's rare to find one of those nowadays. Um, she's saying things like, oh, your footsteps down the hallway. She's talking about the key under the rug. I'm assuming she's talking about a breakup, and you know, you she literally the juice feel like I'm in a breakup. You love to get the that, juice behind songs. I know. Well, you know, I pay, att- <laughs> I pay attention to those kind of things. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Cause it's, you know, it's really easy to, to, it's really easy to write a song, but to, to put your feelings down on paper and feel vulnerable. Um, you can always tell when a, when a songwriter is, is being vulnerable, um, on, on a record. And she seems to be one of those people doing that. And I commend that. What I think is interesting about Rose is the, the, the song, the, the chain smoker song you mentioned was five years ago. It's been, five years Mm. you know it's been a little less than five years since that came out and so i'm interested in uh what she's done since then how she's carving out her path as a solo artist and uh that sort of thing because julian can you get the cat please he keeps climbing on the on the the fucking table oh hi hi i'm sorry here she is let me fix myself We have Elizabeth. She is here. She is on Zoom with us. The one and only Roses. Here we go. Do you go by Elizabeth? Is that, what do your friends call you? Liz, Elizabeth, Lizzie. There's like oh, all I of think them. All of them. Yes. Yeah. I even get Betty as well. Betty. Yeah. Yeah. That's like if you were if you were from the '50s, you'd be Betty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where are you calling in from today? I'm in Philly. You're in Philly. You're like hometown. Have you always lived in Philly? You're from Philly. Have you always stayed there? Has that always been your home base? Yep. 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 When I'm home, this is what I call home. First off, congrats on the new EP. Thank Mm -hmm. you. It's represents, I think a really interesting step forward in your music. Um, It sounds, it's similar to what you've done in the past, but it's also has a fresh feel to it. So tell us about, how you created the sound and the songs for this release. I feel like my process is pretty similar in a lot of, in most of my writing situations. You know, I typically come up with like a concept and the concept for crazy, you know, I feel like women seem to get like this bad rap when, when they're emotional. And um, Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to call it crazy as this like sarcastic tone because it's like, girls who are emotional get called crazy so many times like I can't tell you how many times I've heard my guy friends go yeah she, she was crazy and it's just like <laughs> what it's like no so, you're emotionless <laughs> yeah exactly so I just I I put I wanted to compile like a piece of art that was me like saying all my emotions and like it being like so if that's crazy then call me crazy amazing <laughs> that's kind of like you you're taking back um mm-hmm. You're owning being a woman and having emotions. And on top of that, you can talk about them and you could turn them into a song. You know what I mean? Which is right. freaking really cool. I was talking to Jordy and I was like, this girl is, an, is a real songwriter. She's able to, I find it really rare for people to be vulnerable on record. You know what I mean? And you can tell that you were pouring yourself onto this record. And you're saying things like, you know, your foot sets down the hallway. You're just talking about the key under the rug. I swear to God, I was like, oh my God, am I breaking up right now? I was like, oh my God, like, I feel like I'm her. Like, this is funny, you know? So um, what is your songwriting process like? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so typically I, so I have like this running notepad of concepts in my phone. And it's like, whenever I, like somebody says something or I'm reading a book or I'm watching a TV show and like this phrase like pops into my head, like that that's like what I want to run with when I go into the studio. And so I'll be like, Hey, I have like a list of concepts I would love to write about. And so typically I choose like what I want the overall like emotional vibe to be before I choose anything else. And then, you know, like I'll sit at the piano or somebody will play guitar or whatever. And it just kind of like, it could be different every time, but I definitely always start with a concept. That's amazing. 
you, you and the song you you released a song last year called Halfway There, um, and you included it on this EP. So was that song kind of like the jumping off point for the rest of the of the EP? Did you kind of build the EP around that song as like kind of the the palette, so to speak? Yeah, I would say so. I think that halfway there, it was this. It was a very unique song within my repertoire. It's not something that like a sound that I've tip, that I've really done. I've been like mainly electronic based, and that was probably my least pop radio pop song that I've had. And I feel like um, for this record, I wanted to be able to tie that like the big vocals that I love into like pop pieces so so putting that on the ep kind of challenged me to create like a new box and blurred genre lines a little bit speaking of blurred genre lines you know you come out of the gate people know you for the chain smoker song roses but this is different you have more guitars you're you've been implementing more guitars even like acoustic guitars and i don't i mean this in the best way possible some of your songs your recent songs feel like they could easily be translated into like country or like folk rock. Is yeah. that, is that That's a diss it. or is that kind of intentional? You know, it's kind of funny that you say that because a lot of that um, EP was written in Nashville and Whoa. I think that it the rubs overall off vibe Good is call very Corey. much different. Yeah. So, so the overall vibe of writing in Nashville is very much different from writing in LA. Whereas like, you typically start with like these organic instruments. You're starting with a piano, you're starting with a guitar, and the lyrics are pretty pretty much the most important part, which I love because to me they, that is a very important part. Whereas like in LA, when I was writing um, like my Burn Wild EP, it's more production based and the writing process is more production focused. And so I think that I'm still trying to find the perfect balance between the two. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a good observation. Good catch. I, know. I was like, what? So like you made this record in Nashville. Is, am I, is that correct? Yes. How was yep. that? You go to Nashville, you write a record. You, I, I assume you mainly were writing things in LA. Did that, so that affected your songwriting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I started going to Nashville about two years ago. I had been religiously just going to LA and somebody was like, you know, you would really love writing in Nashville. You should really give it a try. So I go there and I just felt like inspiration was just like filling my, my veins. Like, I don't know how to, maybe like New York does this for you, but like New York does that for me. Like when you go to like a city that you love and you just feel like the energy like rush through you, that's kind of what Nashville felt for me. And so I just ended up doing like a million trips there, like every other month or two I was there and just like writing. And I just love the people and they just seem very interested in the song aspect of a song. So. Well, it makes sense that there'd be a good place for you because storytelling is such a big part of your songwriting. And right, country exactly. music and folk music is based around storytelling. So that kind of makes sense. Mm hmm You've, you've got to be sick of talking about the freaking chain smoker song. <laughs> but what I want to know about, what I want to talk about is it's been five years. What has that five years you jump off, what that jumping off point as, you know, here you are, this big hit song. So what has the five years been like since then to try to f kind of form your own identity and use that as both a jumping off point, but also like, I don't want to not, not like just repeating that same style over and over again. I mean, if I'm brutally honest, like I would say coming off of the chain smokers track was probably like the most lost I'd ever been because I found myself wow. thrown into a genre I knew nothing about and that I was identified as like pretty immediately. And so, I mean, having a song on the radio and it's just like constantly like, how am I gonna compete with this? How am I gonna measure up with the fact that this just happened? You know, and so coming off of that has been a huge challenge for me and like my artist identity, because it's like, what did I want in the beginning of being an artist and where am I at now and how people are identifying me now? And how do I appeal to the fans that I've gained while also being true to who I am as an artist. So I think that like, that's just kind of a journey that I've been on. 
And I wouldn't say that um, I've necessarily like captured that yet, but obviously that song was a huge gift. And, um, but, but it is definitely like throwing me into like, who am I? <laughs> right. Yeah. Tell us about that journey from your girl from Philly. You have dreams of being, you know, when was it that you woke up one day and you said, I am going to be a songwriter? I mean, it's kind of crazy because it's like, I don't think there was ever a moment in time when I was like, I'm just going to write music. Like I went through a bad breakup in high school as like most of us do. And I just happened to turn <laughs> music and like, there was like a talent show coming up and I was like, you know what, I'll write a song. And it was just like, I had never written a song before. I don't know what, what I thought I was. I you, went school, you went to high school kind of in the peak, like, like Lady Gaga, Katy Perry kind of era. Hmm. Exactly. So I was going, I was going through this time where like women were writing very empowering songs and very vulnerable songs about their relationships, like someone like you, Adele, like all this stuff. And I was like, I need to do that. I need to do that because I felt like so connected to their music that I had to do it. And so then, you know, I'm going to college, I'm writing music and like, I was approached by this like Australian DJ to like write this song. And I remember like, I was going to community college. So I remember like getting ready, like at my parents' house, like just writing this song, like in the mirror, which is what the chain smokers found. And <sighs> it, it was kind of like, it wasn't like, and I have, I'm extremely lucky in the way that this worked out. Like I wasn't like, like, hustling and like tending bar you know what I mean like that wasn't like what I was doing at the time I was like studying nursing and like just randomly writing songs in the mirror you know and then all of a sudden like the chain smokers like find me on Twitter and I'm like wait what <laughs> you know so it's like I always knew I wanted to be a musician but I was always told like okay well but like what's the real thing that you are gonna do so when so that fell into my lap I was like oh my god did the, did the name did the moniker roses and the song roses kind of coincide with each other? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was kind of random because I was like, hey guys, like, do you happen to have like a demo of the song that we did just so I can like pass along to management and we can get like the discussion going? And they sent it over as roses featuring roses. And I was like, well, I can't argue with that. So, <laughs> and where did roses come from? Who named you roses? What's the story behind that? <laughs> um, so, I was going by this like singer songwriter named Lizbeth Rose, another play on Elizabeth. And, mm. and then I was like, you know, when the chain smokers had found me, I was like, well, I'm not a singer songwriter anymore. I'm more of like an EDM artist. I should, you know, my whole brand is changing. So I need to probably change my name. Need something in all caps. So, <laughs> all ca like spaced out. I yeah. do feel like do the caps, but the spaced out, nah. And um, so my brother at the time, he was my manager. He's actually still one of my managers still to this day. But he was like, why don't we do it like with a Z? And I was like, okay, I'm down for that. And it was just kind of random the way it worked. And we just like took Rose from my name. And yeah, I mean, just happened. It's a conscious decision as an artist to either be, you know, I'm just going to make the music and keep my mouth shut, or I'm going to be one of those people who speaks out. So I grew up like this extremely bullied kid. And so I was never the, a person that wasn't accustomed to standing on my own. It like, so when I decided that like taking a stance on these things, I was like, I've stood on my own before. If there's people that I'm going to lose along the way, this isn't something that I, that will be new to me. So I just felt like I need to have a voice because there are people who don't. And, you know, I'm extremely lucky in, in all aspects of life, I would say. And so it is extremely imperative for me to speak out and, and ha be the voice for people who feel like they don't have one. It's amazing. What, did, um, what advice would you have? I know there's a lot of people, especially in times like this, struggling with depression and anxiety. Um, do you have any advice um, for those people to kind of navigate themselves it's hard because like i have even talking about mental health in this industry i, I think a lot of people do it's kind do of it. risky it's unfortunately it's risky it is very risky because you you do risk like people on your team not really understanding and being like oh i don't like that like that stance for you and it's like but this isn't like a stance this isn't like 
my pla like thing that I'm like my brand, you know what I mean? Like this is something that I struggle with every single day. And so I think that what's hard is my, me speaking out about it is very much different than somebody from like high school working a nine to five speaking out about it. Like for me, it's like, Oh, she's speaking out about it. Like that's what she does. But for somebody who's, you know, living that quote unquote normal, more normal life, I think it's hard for people to speak out about and the stigma stronger. So I think like my greatest advice is to just, you know, kind of be brave and start opening up to, if you can try to open up to your friends and, you know, you don't know if they're struggling too and, and how they can lead you to reaching out to a therapist or you talking to your doctor, like things like that. So you, it's just like, I think the biggest advice I have is definitely like trying to find just like five seconds of courage to just like bring it up with a friend. It's, it's interesting what you said that um, it's easy for, especially with women to put um, for, for the music industry to want to put you in a box and just say, stay doing this, just do your thing. This is working for you. But in fact, it's your fans, your fans need to know that, that they can relate to you in that way because because they can, and you know, they need someone like their idol to talk about that. So thank you for bringing that up and being open about that in interviews. That's helpful for even someone like me to hear you talk about that. That's like, I'm like, oh, like kudos. Yes. 100%. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, I think like the biggest thing as an artist is that I've always told myself that I won't be afraid to speak up about the things that matter to me and um, that matter to my friends. And so I've just like 100% made that promise to myself when I became an artist. I saw an interview you did uh, on on YouTube that you mentioned that you wanted to collaborate with hip hop artists at some point. How close are you to making that happen? Have you done that? And who do you have in mind? <laughs> um, I don't know how much I can say, but I am like, I, I love it. I class. love when people are like smiling with that little impish, like I, <laughs> I got something that you don't know about yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I do have something in the works that should be coming soon. Um, but I do, I mean, like, I, I would love to get into that world more, more deep of like, you know, doing like a, a like a, an awesome hook on like a, on a rap, things like that. But yeah, I do have something locked and loaded, um, heading, heading our way soon. Great. Good tease. Good tease. That's yeah. a, and speaking of writing and genre bending, um, songwriting seems to have, I mean, when I listen to your music, it just feels like it just all falls into place. Is songwriting something that came naturally to you? And especially pop songwriting um, is something that, you know, there's a lot of hype around making a good pop song, making a hit. It seems to be something that you do naturally. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, music, I feel like it's more fluent to me than like speaking. So if I need to tell somebody how I feel, I've always been the person that was like sending a song, like listen to these lyrics. <laughs> no you know way. I mean? Wait, to guys too? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anybody. No I mean, way. Anybody. I've That's always awesome. been like a hundred percent, hundred percent passionate. And um, awesome. so yeah, so I think like songwriting has it's always been a part of me. I mean, like I, my parents had me in like piano lessons at six, like music has just been in my blood. And so it's no surprise that I am a musician or, or a songwriter because, you know, I would listen to like No Doubt growing up or like Alicia Keys and I just would, I just wanted to be them so bad. Like I would stand in front of the TV and I would just like sing to Christina Aguilera while she sang at me. Like, Oh my God. <laughs> Do you remember the first band or artist that you, when you were a little kid, I mean like, you know, in that nine, 10, 11 year old range, when you first become aware of what's on the radio, what were you into first? Like what kind of like fueled your fire to begin with? First, um, probably Spice Girls for sure. I mean, no I was, way. I was like making dances, like a hundred percent that baby spice every Halloween. What? But I... <laughs> <laughs> but I but, but I think like the person who like really turned my life around is probably Alicia Keys. Um she like when she If I Ain't Got You was like my favorite song and I would play it on like what is like karaoke revolution. Every single day I would be singing that song on karaoke revolution. <laughs> Chase have shifted a little bit away from that kind of pop that kind of like we were talking about when you're in high school was like the peak of that Lady Gaga, Katy Perry kind of era so 
how do you feel about where pop music is now in re- and in regards to the way music is released and you know the streaming platforms and stuff like that Oh, that's a hard question. You know, I think that there's always a place for those big girl vocals, the the Katy Perry's, the Lady Gaga's, the Ariana Grande's. Like, there's always a slot for us. But I think that right now music is what I like to call the Brooklyn girl. I think it's very much like laid back indie pop hip hop if that makes sense. And so when you think about like writing a song like for me when I think about writing a song, I'm like I don't like to think about this, but I'm like, is this going to stream well with the with where pop is right now? You know, you always have to like implement these different types of like production features or melodic features in a song. So right now, I think pop is in a place, and not to mention with the pandemic, people don't want to listen to like. I don't think it's a time for like really sad songs because we're feeling sad already so like when you think about the songs that are popular right now a lot of it is like very empowering like fu type stuff so i think that's pretty much where pop is right now so where do you think the the future there's a lot of things happening in music right now i feel like people are taking back you know, music from the music industry. Um, whereas you can find a lot of my homies' um, favorite songs are just these viral things that are going around SoundCloud. You know what I mean? And I think people are taking back the power from from the labels and from radio even, which has been controlled by the labels. Where do you think the future of music stands, especially pop music in your genre? Yeah, I, that is such an interesting concept because like, you know, I was talking with my boyfriend last night about TikTok. And I was like, if I had TikTok Mm. as like a 10 year old, like who knows what I would have been. I'm not, I even have a TikTok, man. I see all these these people singing and I'm like, they are so good. And not to mention people are so funny. Like I think TikTok is amazing. I love it. I don't know. But, but I'm just like thinking about like, it's your, you're right. I mean, people are choosing what's popular. I mean, that Bourne song, like, baby, you're like lightning in a bottle. Like I would have, I don't, I mean, I love Bourne's, but I probably wouldn't have heard that song because I don't listen to the radio now that I'm on my car, blah, blah, blah. But like, just thinking about that, like, I only know that song because of TikTok. Do you find that, um, that is something being in the pop world that you are encouraged to do and just feels like, oh, here we go. I got to do this. Um, How do you feel on that? Yeah, I mean, when I look at other artists, everything is like makeup on 10, outfit on 10. Yeah, filter, filter. And for me, I'm like, that's never been who I am. I mean, like, I love to get dressed up. I love to do my makeup. I love to be in cool places. But like, that's not who I am 100% of the time. And I think like the thing that I've always done as an artist is show like the human in me because like, I, I don't want to be somebody that people think they can't be. You know what I mean? And so like on my TikTok, I'm never like, I'm never like on 10, I would say. I would say I've, I'm always in like my bathrobe and like in my bathroom doing like my eyebrows or something. Be honest, you, know? you done one of those videos where you throw the shoes up in the air and then, you change, <laughs> and then you're in a different, different new outfit. Have you done one of those? Hey, Jordan. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't even fathom where I would start on recording one of those. Yeah. Can we shout out the roses TikTok on this podcast just for the heck of it? Now that we're yes, on yes. I actually like today. I did a TikTok about like a dating disaster I had, which was like hilarious. So I'm like trying to like maybe do stuff like that where I'm like, you know what? Let me just show like how real this stuff is for me. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, what is your TikTok? If we can just have that. It's at Roses Sounds. So R O E S S O U N D S. Got it on the books. We, yeah. we, we, we sound like we're 60 years old complaining about all these young kids with their TikToks and all stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I, the question that, that I thought of when you guys were talking just now is if you could pick an era to come up in to be a popular artist, what would it be? I think that, you know, you would do well in that sort of late 90s TRL era or maybe yeah. the 80s synth pop era would be cool too. 
<laughs> yeah, I think I would definitely do very well in the era of like having to showcase. Like when when people like when you would have to have like labels come out and like see your show, you know, like yeah. instead of being the the social like I but but then again, I'm like, okay, well, what if I was like young doing like TikTok, YouTube, Instagram? Like, I don't know. I have no idea, honestly. Yeah. You have this, you have this. Um, so Demi is a really talented guitar player. She's her, a good musician in her own right. Oh, he's tooting my horn. Yes. <laughs> Me and, too. Um, she's just, she's, she's writing songs now that will be, you know, the next big, thing in a year you just watch but Gordon. yeah i will I'm yeah yeah I, I like yeah, hopefully I, feel, I can get that roses collab you know yeah. that would just be the best thing in the world <laughs> where where this is leading is you have this guitar hanging behind you and so i will let demi lead this lead this question but i'm curious about your your gear are you a gear nerd are you is that like a really fancy guitar like where do you stand on your your instruments and stuff um, so I play like seven instruments and I only seven? A, yeah, only Get seven. Out. Can you I list the instruments for your friends? I okay, so triangle doesn't count. Try yeah, triangle. No, I do <laughs> piano, saxophone, violin, clarinet, flute, guitar, and voice. Of course, they count as my what? <laughs> um yeah crazy but i grew up in a household that we had a music room and because like my brothers they always played music my dad's a musician so we just there were instruments everywhere and when i was bored i would learn an instrument and so yeah but no i wouldn't say i'm a nerd a nerd per se but i like instruments and like i would love for my next instrument to be like um brass go into brass yes yeah, so i really my first family too one of my main instruments is like is alto saxophone so i should probably go into like trumpet next yeah just in case you want to join a ska band later just in case yeah, yeah. yeah. you have a music you come from a musical family and i'm not a stalker but your brother um is also one of your producers and you have another brother that you say co-manages you what's it like what is that like working with your family so closely in your career? First of all, are they are they younger brothers or older brothers? No, so they're older. I'm the youngest. I'm a little baby. Oh. oh. But, um, <laughs> but, oh. Yeah, so working with my brother, Pat, who produces and, like, co-writes, uh, like, a bunch of, if not, like, majority of my stuff, um, it's kind of like this, like, ongoing joke in Nashville because we, we go to Nashville a lot together. We will fight in the studio. Like, we will fight. Like, when we were singing, oh my when, God. We, when we wrote Halfway There, we there's this lyric that's like, are we going to finish what we started or just leave it here? And and the fight was whether it should be here or there. And it lasted probably like three hours. We were like, we hated each other. So who won? <laughs> I think I won, but he says he won. Nobody can remember. Was there, like, was there an that. engineer there like like rolling their eyes like, when yep. is this going to end? Ding, ding, yep. ding. And with the bell. <laughs> yep, exactly. And so um, our friend Aaron was in the studio and he, he knows this is how it goes, but that was his first session with us. And he was like, uh, and I was like, well, what do you think? And he was like, I don't want to be put in the middle. <laughs> Here or there. Yeah. But it is nice because I really trust them and you know, they're, they're hard on me, but I know because they know my potential and like, I like people who can like give me the, the hard truth where they're like, you saying that's stupid, you know, like I need people like that. Um, you also, um, like I said, again, I'm really not an Instagram stalker, but you're also you say that a often, talented Jimmy. designer. You like I'm an Instagram times. stalker, everybody. Yeah. I really am. No, I just go on people's accounts and I, um, who we interview and I really get down and dirty into the posts, but you actually, correct me if I'm wrong, you designed or you made the pants you are wearing right now. Can we see mm -hmm. those pants? Yes. Oh my god. Is this true? Okay. Did you make these pants? I Are did make these a roses pants. Collection. I these pants. Wow. Um, no, they're so me, cool. Thank you. It took me a good old three tries, but um yeah, I was determined. I felt like it was something a good you like to do. Me. 
Yeah, well, I just started this. My boyfriend got me a sewing machine, and because I, there's this artist in Nashville, her name's Cassie, Cassie Ashton, I think that's how you say it, but she sews all of her stuff, and I was like, that is dope. What, I do that. what did you make and, those pants out of? Um, I'm not even sure. I just kind of found the fabric on, like, this place called Joanne's Fabric. I think it's like a sat, satin type material but like fake fake satin i don't know Something that would like be that. so cool for merch i feel like the pink and like that material yeah. because roses you know what you I mean? just That's a little, like true. embroidered rose at the bottom of the pants i kind of want them yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i want them i saw them i was like oh my god i have to ask her about these pants how did she <laughs> <laughs> yes well you know they they're not perfect but they they do the job <laughs> that pants do <laughs> Um, rolling back into the music a little bit, um, Sorry. you have this EP, you've had a couple EPs now, obviously the, the natural progression is a full length album. Is that coming up? Is that in your, you know, is that in your view? Where, where do you stand on that? Right now, I am basically just collecting a giant folder of songs, and um, I don't know whether that means an album or singles, but, you know, eventually I would love to do an album. That's not something that I, that's ever been really, like, in the immediate future, because I'm not sure that albums are, like, a thing right now for me, who's mostly, like not touring right now you know what i mean so i feel like i would love to do an album but i don't know i don't know is my answer i guess <laughs> gordon's an album type person so um but i agree without touring it's kind of like the, the whole purpose of the album kind of seems crazy how is how else has coronavirus affected your artistry for the um you, you know <clears throat> it's interesting because have you been I, productive? That's, that's the question. I have been productive. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely lucky to be able to work from home, doing Zoom sessions and things like that. You know, my privilege is not lost on me. But I, um, I think that writing from home, there's, there's an added vulnerability that I can have. Like, I typically am going to a place, another state, that's not my home, to a session of people that I don't know, to talk pressure. about things that they don't know about me, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot of new things all in one. And as like an anxious person, it's just, it's, it's anxiety provoking, I would say. And I think that a lot of songwriters and maybe I'll just speak for myself are like are introvert introverts until they're extroverts. And so being able to get on a zoom and write, it kind of takes away that, like that added pressure of, of meeting new people in a new place and talking about something vulnerable. It just kind of, you're just, you just are in your comfort zone, if that makes sense. Are you one of those people when you write something, when you write a set of lyrics, when you come up with a melody that you want immediate feedback from somebody, or do you like to sit on the music for a while before you show it to somebody? Uh, immediate feedback. I mean, I am like a hundred percent like need spoiler alerts. Like I need it now that kind of stuff. I'm very impatient. <laughs> and do you usually, who do you ask for feedback? Is it your brothers since they're kind of in your, in your, uh, on your team? Yep. Yep. So my brothers and then my other manager, Mike, you know, I'll just like immediately send it to them. Like, let me know what you think. You know, if, if they're like, it's not for me, I'm like, cool, let's keep moving. You know what I mean? I'm a big fan of you as a songwriter, as well as a singer and performer. Um, what tips do you have for, for songwriters? Like what's something you can share about being vulnerable on paper? Yeah, I think that the biggest thing, and I always say this, but it's, it's probably the best advice that I have is just to learn how to do things yourself, learn how to accompany mm. yourself, learn how to write for yourself, learn how you like to sing, identify yourself before you let anybody else identify you. And then, you know, learn how to like cut your own vocals or, you know, things like that. Like learn what you like sounds good for yourself because like the more that you can do for yourself, the less you rely on others and the less they can shape you into who they want you to be. That is honest to God. I have chills right now. Some of the best advice I've ever heard an artist give on oh, show. Hell yeah. 
That's, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> I want to play a game with you um, before, unless Jordan wants to. No, say, go ahead. Go ahead. This I is, have this yeah, game. Go for it. This is a game that I just, I can't help but, but bomb the show with, but I just do it. I just do it as long as I can. So you guys feel awkward. Okay, ready? This is a game show. Um, and we're going to go on an extravagant Mexican vacation, just you and one of these other pop stars. Ooh. Now, if you can answer as quick as you can, it's just you two, no business involved, just just a vacation, okay? So Mariah Carey or Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga. Beyonce or Shakira? I'm at him. Beyonce. What? <laughs> Justin Bieber or Shawn Mendes? This is a tough one. Justin Bieber. Oh, okay. okay. Katy Perry or Gwen Stefani? Gwen Stefani. What? Oh my God, that's crazy. I expected you to say the opposite. Ludacris or Snoop Dogg? Snoop Dogg. What? <laughs> Prince or Michael Jackson? Prince. Okay, wow. Uh, Erica Badu or Sade? Sade. Oh, oh my goodness. All right. That was Every answer, they were like, what? <laughs> so it was, I, I had like all of these things. I was like, okay, she's going to say all of these. And you just said the exact opposite, which is pretty cool. That's amazing. So thank you for playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I wanted to spend time on the island with people that I need to get to know and learn from. Right. Like there are so many people that I already, I'm obsessed with. You know what I mean? My favorite thing is like when Demi does this little award association game is to see people, how A, irritated they are how much fun they're having and how seriously they take the questions. Like some people will like hack, will like really hack think out like, well, I want this person for this reason and this person for that reason. So blue yeah, hacker game. my impulsiveness. Yeah. You, you had good answers. You'd get answers. <laughs> I, I want to end on, I want to end on this before I let you go. I got to ask you some Philly questions. A few Philly questions. You mentioned you're a big Questlove fan. Do you also like Hall and Oates? Yes. And actually one, uh, one half of Hall and Oates went to my high school. Which, which half, Daryl? No, I think it was curly hair. Um, Oates. Oates. I think it was Oates because he no, came back. I know he, it was one of them, but I think it was Oates. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite Hall and Oates song? Um, your Kiss is on my list. Okay, I, I enjoy. So this is a fun little story. My parents met when my dad asked my mom to dance to Sarah Smile, the Hollow Notes song Sarah Smile. So I, I owe my Jordan. existence to Hollow Notes. Hall Notes. Yes. <laughs> you certainly do. <laughs> I have a Philly fan, uh, question. Um, are you a fan of Philly cheesesteak? Yes. Yeah, do you get sick of, do you, are you like, are you over it? Do you get sick of people asking about Philly cheesesteaks? <laughs> No, honestly, I think it is a great thing to be known for. Uh, we have the best cheesesteaks, no doubt about it. I had one like two days ago. So. Pats or Gino's? <laughs> okay, so I would say Pats, but I would say go to neither and go to Jim's or Joe's. Oh, so all do all Philly cheesesteak places just have a single name? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. That, I did, never thought of that, but yes. <laughs> well, thanks. That's a good like uh, tourist tip right there. The bypass Patsagino's. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we will let you go. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm Jordan Edwards and you can find me at jordanedwardsstudio.com or on Instagram at jordanedwardsstudio. And I'm Demi Ramos and you can find me on Instagram at Demi underscore Ramos. Thanks for listening.